one rule for creating the life and business that you want. This is an episode that is a must listen to on repeat to keep reminding yourself about this. This is something I remind myself of and all my clients on a regular basis. It's super, super important. And if there was one thing that I wish I knew or learned or gained awareness of earlier, like when I was younger, and and I preface this by saying, I'm not someone who ever says, oh, if only I knew everything I knew now when I was 18 or whatever, 13. I, I, I'm not down with that idea at all. I think it's a terrible idea. I had loads of very naive adventures where I learned a lot of things from not knowing everything that I know now. Um, and uh, and so I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. But there is one thing that I do wish I knew sooner. And perhaps I did know it from some, to some extent because I did do some pretty cool things when I was young. But it's also the one thing that I know makes all the difference to how empowered my clients and my students become. And when I say empowered, I mean that they, they're in control, that they can, they can create what they want to create. It comes down to this one thing. And uh, I share this with everyone that I work with. Okay. I share this with everyone that I work with. I talk about it all the time. And some people pick it up really quickly and they get it and they run with it. Some people take a little bit longer they hear it but then suddenly something drops and they and they get it a bit later on and uh, and I swear there's some people that just refuse to <laughs> refuse to accept this but that's okay everyone's where they're at so the number one rule that I'm talking about of course is cause and effect and I'm going to go into detail a lot of detail about what exactly is this what does it mean and so you can really check in for yourself about where you're at around this cause and effect. So cause and effect, what does this really mean? Well, you might have heard of this before, this cause and effect thing that gets bandied around, but it can take a bit to get your head around. Like I hear people when they first hear it, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, they, they swap it around back to front and they, you know, it takes a bit to work out, okay, what does being a cause mean and what does being at effect me because you might have heard that for every effect there is a cause or for every cause there is an effect and so for most people what they make that mean is that if I'm feeling or experiencing this effect for example you know I'm feeling mad or sad or angry or upset or left out or ignored or jealous or stuck or incapable or helpless or used or taken advantage of you know fill in the blanks if I'm feeling that it must mean that the cause of that effect is something outside of me okay because so I'm feeling mad because that person did or said that or I'm feeling sad because this happened Right? And they put the, the cause of that effect, the effect of their, their feeling, okay? They put the cause of that outside of themselves because it seems to make sense, right? Like if, if I'm really the cause of those things, why would I make myself feel angry or mad or sad or upset or anything else? Well, it doesn't seem to make sense, right? But here's the thing. The most important part that's being left out of that equation, okay, of where I feel this way and so someone must be doing something to me or it's because something else that's happened to me, the thing that's been left out of that equation is that the meaning that you make about a thing in that moment of time is actually the cause of the effect. Okay, so the effect that you're experiencing is not the effect of what someone else has said or done but it's actually the effect of what meaning you have made about what someone else has said or done okay this is the big difference and the meaning that you make about anything about anyone about any situation 
the meaning that you make is completely up to you. Now, this can be very much out of people's awareness sometimes, right? Because we get conditioned in our, our families, in our culture, in our society, society about what do things mean. But we know that across the world, different things mean different things to different people. All right. So, you know, for example, even if you look at um, diet, right? Like in Australia, a lot of people who are meat eaters eat beef, right? Cows. You go to some part of the world, some parts of the world, and cows are sacred and that's sacrilege. There's a completely different meaning. So the things that we, the meaning that we create is like completely up to us. Right? It's up to us and what we decide something means. And the emotions and the thought patterns that come off the back of that are also completely up to us. Right? This is this is really important to know. So let's have some examples, right? If you're on a health kick and say, you know, something happens and you're having a bad day and you're getting stressed out, and then you go, stuff it. I'm just gonna go and eat all the chocolate, or I'm gonna go to, I don't know, Maccas, I, I can't even believe people still eat Maccas, <laughs> but whatever it is that you do, no judgment. I've eaten plenty of Hungry Jacks before in my time before I decided that wasn't real food. Um, but whatever it is that you do, right? So you go and binge out and eat all the wrong things. And if you're at effect, you'll go, well, the reason that I did that was because I was so stressed out because, you know, whatever else has happened, that was out of my control. You know, maybe the kids were going crazy. Maybe I had a fight with my partner. Maybe something went wrong in my business. Um, maybe, you know, someone was just super rude to me. Uh, and so that made me stressed. And so because I was stressed, then I've gone out and I've just binged, eat it, you know, ate all this stuff. Okay. That's being at, at effect. Okay. That's being at effect because, yeah, sure, there's been things that have happened. People might have said something, done something, whatever, that you don't like and you've made some kind of judgment or meaning around it, which has caused some kind of emotion in you, right? But if you're if you're saying that I can't do anything about that, you're at effect, okay? And then, you know, maybe you might start saying to yourself, well, actually now it means that I'm a failure and I'll never get healthy. And then you give up. That's being at effect. Okay, all of that stuff's being at effect. So when we're at cause in that situation, when we're at cause, when we see some other kind of um, behavior or someone says something, we take responsibility for the meaning of whatever that is and also how much we let that affect us. All right, and now look, people aren't, you know, we're not monks. No, I'm not expecting anyone's going to be a monk you know, meditating on the top of the hill that just never feels any emotions. I feel emotions, things happen, yeah. But if you if you decide like, you know what, I can't do anything about that, that's being an effect. Being at cause might be, okay, I feel like I've been a bit triggered by that, whatever that is, I'm going to do something healthy to help me process that and not let it affect me. So what could that be? Well, it could be you go for a walk. It could be that you do some meditation. It could be you go to yoga class. It could be that you talk to someone who helps you process it and, you know, express those emotions. There's a whole range of things that you could do, right? Same as if if it's gone a little bit further than that and you do get into it, the, the whole binge, well, then you can take responsibility and be at cause about that and go, okay, look, so I've binged, I've done all this. Right, what does that mean? It means tomorrow I've got to get back on track. And so tomorrow I'm going to get back on track and I'm just going to decide this was just a bit of a speed bump and I'm going to stay on track and keep moving forward. Right, that would be being at course. Uh, if you're in business, if you're in business and you're struggling and complaining that you can't get any clients, and I'm kind of laughing here because, you know, I've done complaining in my time, right? <laughs> my clients do. Right, we all get into that space. I can't get any clients, or someone stole my ideas, or um, oh, I don't have time to do the things that I'm I'm supposed to be doing. And if you just keep going on about all that stuff, 
that's being at effect, right? You're saying that these things are out of your control, that something's happening external to you and uh, you can't do anything about it, right? Saying things like, oh, I've tried everything. Well, that's being at effect because you haven't tried everything because if you tried everything, you would have the results, right? Like that's the thing. So when we're at cause, okay, when we're at cause, we still have obstacles and we still have challenges, but we decide I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to, I'm going to number one, be guardian of my thoughts, right? So I'm going to be guardian of my thoughts and I'm not going to tell myself a bunch of negative stories or if I start and I notice, I'm going to stop them and I'm going to flip it around, right? And focus on what actually do I want to create here? I'm going to put my energy into what do I actually want to create here? And I'm going to be at cause. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do this until I'm going to find a way to do it, right? That's being at cause. So being at cause means that firstly, when you're at cause, you're taking responsibility and that means that you do what you say you'll do. Okay, so if you say you're going to be doing, um, be consistent on social media and do videos and run a webinar and, you know, whatever it else it is that you say you'll do, well, then you do it. Okay, you do those things. Um, being at cause means if you're looking at, you know, uh, improving your health and you say, I'm going to go for a walk every day, well, then you do it. You do whatever you have to do to make that happen. Block it out of your calendar. Arrange someone else to take on some, you know, jobs or whatever that they can support you. Okay? You, you do what you say you're going to do. Secondly, being at cause means that if things don't go to plan, right, which, they, which, which happens because whenever we set goals, whenever we decide we're going to do something, there will be obstacles right? There will always be obstacles. So when we're being at cause, we decide to overcome those obstacles. If things don't go to plan, we reassess and we take action to get back on track, right? We problem solve. We do whatever it takes to get that result that we say that we want. And thirdly, being at cause means that you decide what it is that you think about, what you focus on, and how you feel, right? The emotions and the behaviors that you do or don't do, right? That's being at cause. That's taking responsibility for yourself, right? And often, and, and given, like before I really got into personal development, I didn't know that it was possible for me to change how I thought or how I felt, I, I just honestly believe like this situation is happening. This is how I feel. This is what I'm thinking about it. And, and it never even occurred to me that I could change that. Of course, now we know, I, of course, I know, <laughs> I know I can now. That's how I changed my whole life and build a, you know, successful business and how I coach others and train and mentor coaches and practitioners and therapists. And I, I coach other business owners. I, all of that is because I got to be at cause and took control of my own life and my own results and then started helping other people do that as well. Okay, so being at cause means that you, you do what you say you do, that you, you are consistently reassessing and getting yourself back on track, you're problem solving, you're overcoming obstacles, you're thinking possibilities. Okay, you're in control of what's going on in your mind. And this is why NLP is such a powerful tool for people to have. Right? Learning NLP is what got me to understand how the mind works, how the mind works between, you know, there's the uh, NLP communication model is a very powerful model to look at when, okay, there's an event, there's something that happens external to me, I receive information, how I process that information, how I feel about that information, and then essentially what happens to my physiology and then my behaviors and my outcomes when you understand that and you understand how to create change, like I can change my state like that. Hey, that's anchoring an NLP. Okay, I can change the pictures that I have in my mind so that they're not triggering me. We do that with submodalities in NLP. I can choose my language and the words that are used because remembering that uh, you, you would have heard me speak about this before if you heard, you know, been to any of my workshops or listened to my other episodes of the podcast is that 
Your words don't describe your reality. They create your reality, right? So being at cause about that, what am I speaking into my reality? Okay, because being at cause means you have to give up like blaming and complaining and shaming and judging and all that kind of stuff. Give it up, right? It doesn't get you anywhere. Being at cause means you focus on what you want, focus on creating what you want, whether that be relationships, health, business, whatever outcomes, your life, this is your life, right? This is your life. And this is why we talk about cause and effect being an empower being empowerment, because when you're at cause, you're empowered to create the life you want to live, right? This is the foundations. And this is why I say this is the number one key thing that you need if you want to create any real change in your life. You have to be at cause. As long as you put the responsibility or the blame for, or, you know, your, out, your outcomes, your results, your life, as long as you put the cause of that outside of you, and, and say that it's up to other people and, you know, make it about other people, you'll never get control of what you want. You'll never be able to choose what you want. If you decide that, you know, if you, if you don't want to let go of the fact that something happened to you when you were a child and that that um, made you a certain way, right? If you don't want to, if you refuse to let go of that, you're never going to move forward. But but it's it's only you that it affects, right? It's only you that it affects. So this is really important, right? It's a very different way of thinking for most people who haven't come across this, this kind of stuff because it's more common for people to avoid taking responsibility for their situation, for their emotions, for their thoughts, because people don't want to be at blame or at fault. But this is the thing, being at cause and taking responsibility is not about being blamed or at fault, right? Taking responsibility and being at cause is about having the power to create what you want without waiting for someone else to make it happen for you. Because here's the thing, like people can take blame or fault for stuff and still not do anything to change the situation, right? It's just taking responsibility. It's being at cause. I remember working with a client uh, who, like, really successful guy, great business, and uh, he was saying to me, he goes, oh, look, no, I, I fully um, I fully take responsibility for stuff because, you know, I, I take the blame all the time. It's like responsibility is not about blame. It's like you can take the blame and still not do anything to change it, right? Being at cause, taking responsibility means that, yeah, maybe you will wear that it, it's, it's your responsibility, but it's your responsibility to do something about it. It's your responsibility to make it different. Okay, and this is what is really important. I Consistently, the people who I see that are creating a life that they want to live, the business that they want, the income that they want, the health that they want, the relationships that they want, they are, they're people who are at cause and they take responsibility for making these things happen. It's very empowering, right? It's very empowering. They focus on what's possible instead of the yeah, buts or the what ifs, okay? They work on themselves, right? People work on themselves when they take responsibility for themselves. They learn how to be in control of their mind, right? They learn how to be in control of their thoughts and their emotions, and their beliefs, and their values, right? and then ultimately their outcomes. There are people who know that there's no magic wand. There's no magic pill. There's no knight in shining armor coming to save them. Right? This, this, especially, this is especially true, like being at cause is also especially true, like when I'm working with clients and I'm doing processes with them, okay? So if we're doing timeline therapy and I'm going to use some imagination and, and communicate with our unconscious mind, if someone says to me, I can't do it, that's being at effect. That's being at effect. Of course you can do it. you you got to choose to do it. It's like people will say, I can't be hypnotized. Right, people who say that they can't be hypnotized, it's usually because they don't really understand what hypnosis is, right? But hypnosis is just following instructions. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. 
Okay, so this is a really important thing. If you're working with your clients in whatever capacity, if you're coaching your clients or, uh, you know, you, you do some kind of um, health, you know, coaching with them. I work with a lot of, um, you know, practitioners and different therapists. If they want to get really good results, they have to do it with you. And they have to take responsibility for their own outcomes. Because I can do all the work in the world, in the office with someone. Uh, but if if they don't actively take responsibility for their own transformation and their own change, right? If they're just sitting there going, oh, just do it to me. Like I'm going to, you know, do some magic da -da -da -da, and all the problems disappear. That's, a, that's being at effect. Okay, that's being completely at effect. Right, so being at effect is it can be saying that something outside of me is causing my problem, but it's also being at effect is saying something outside of me has to fix my problem. That's being at effect, right? Being at cause is is becoming your own hero. Right, this is the good part. When you take responsibility for yourself, you become your own hero. You take your responsibility for your own outcomes. And you actively just put yourself in that space of like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to choose how I feel. You know, one of my mantras was, I choose to feel good regardless, right? I choose to feel good regardless. That's being at course because what that says is regardless of what's going on external to me, regardless of what someone says to me, what someone does, doesn't do, I choose to feel good. Right? I choose to feel good because that's what boundaries are for, right? If I've got someone in my life who's saying things that are like mean or not not supporting me and they're crossing my boundaries, being at cause means I enforce those boundaries, right? And, and enforcing those boundaries might be saying, hey, do you know what? That's not okay with me. Uh, and if you continue to do that, I'm going to take further action, right? And that further action might be that you don't spend time with that person. Right, that's a boundary, right? People, this is being at cause means that you have real boundaries, right? And you enforce those boundaries. Okay, when people say to me, Oh, well, I tried, I've tried having boundaries, but I've tried having boundaries with this person, but um, they don't listen. That's being out of fit, right? <laughs> because boundaries mean I express my boundaries and I enforce those boundaries, which means. If the person continues to cross them, I do something to correct that. Okay, you do something to correct that. So it could be that you spend less less time with that person. Um, you know, I have I have boundaries in my in my business. There's boundaries in my business, and if I say, you know, around my time, for example. So if you think about your time. Sometimes when you're in business, you can feel like, oh my God, people just want me all the time, especially with social media and people will message and all those kinds of things, all different hours. I don't have to respond at 11 o'clock at night because someone has um, messaged me. I don't have to feel bad about it, right? Because I am at response, I take responsibility for myself and how I want that to look, right? How do I want to feel about it? Okay, it's all of these things. It comes down to the meaning. It comes down to your boundaries. It comes down to you taking responsibility and then you're at cause, right? And this is a good thing. When you're at cause and you take responsibility for yourself and your outcomes, the universe support you, right? Other people support you. Because when you're moving in that direction and you're like, yes, this is what I'm going to make happen and you take responsibility for it, it's an, it's an energy other people support, right? It's, it's an energy other people support. So being at cause, cause and effect, I hope this has really given you a deeper understanding of thinking about, you know, what is being at cause mean? Where am I at effect? So that's my question for you this week. You know, where do you feel like you're not in control or not taking responsibility for the outcomes in your life? What do you what do you find yourself complaining about the most? Right? It's where we're complaining, right? That that can be a real, real indicator of where you're being out of effect. What excuses are you giving yourself for why you're not having things how you want them? 
right? What excuses are you giving yourself? It's a really interesting one because usually there's there's ways, you know, there's areas in your life that you will no doubt be like, yeah, I'm I'm in control, right? I'm taking responsibility and you'll know what those areas are because things are how you want them, right? Things are how you want them. But there are also be areas where you're probably a little bit unconscious of being out of effect. And this is why people come and see coaches, right? People come and see coaches because they're like, I, I'm, you know, a client who is completely at cause and taking action and focusing on what they want will most likely not be my client because they will already be doing what they need to do. When clients come to see you, they will generally be at effect and they were saying, there's this kind of situation um, and I can't change it myself, right? I can't, I can't fix it. And so then the whole job of coaching or, you know, even if it's um, whatever kind of health that you're doing, health support, service, coaching, whatever that might be that you're doing, your job is to get that person to be at cause. Because when you get people to be at cause, you empower them, right? They will have much better outcomes. They'll continue to, you know, having much better outcomes long after they've worked with you. It comes down to empowerment. And if you want to have your clients at cause, your clients are your projection. I could do another whole episode about projections. Your clients are your projections. So if you've got clients that you feel like aren't taking responsibility for themselves and are staying stuck at effect, then you've got to look at yourself and go, okay, where am I being at effect? Okay, because when you're at cause, you can very much more expect other people to be at cause and they will be, right? It's an energetic match. It's an energetic match. Now, I'm not saying that you're always going to be 100% at cause 24-7. We're human, right? I'm human. There's times when I say to my partner, I just need to have a whinge about this. And I go, blah, 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 you know, all the stuff. And I go, right. Cut that off my chest. What am I going to do about it? Okay, so don't think it's about, oh, I've got to be, you know, perfect all the time. We're human. We're human. But if you slip off, you find yourself at effect, recognize that you're being at effect, right? And then decide how long do you want to stay there before you get yourself back into cause, take responsibility, take action, focus on what you want and create those outcomes as you want them. Oh,